All right, fellas, it's great to be back again uh, tonight, fellowship with you guys. I know I had uh, mentioned in the in the lesson, I think it was what was the discussion we had last week, we were, you know, and um, in the middle of that discussion, I mentioned that our enemy uh, doesn't have a bottom, you know, uh, you know, and and I, I know that kind of that concept was kind of strong. Um. And I know D Mac wanna talk about that a little bit more. So I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna kick off the bottomless discussion off to D Mac and uh let him get this party started. Yeah. All right, uh well as you mentioned, I mean um when you made that statement last week, it really hit me like a bombshell. And I don't know why, but it hit me in a way that I had never really anticipated hearing a statement like that. Um, you said they have no bottom. And then my mind began to race about concerning all of the historic events that have happened to our people over the millennia and, and all of the horrific historic events that have happened and, and all praises to the most high yet we're still here but at the same time as the most high is preserving his people in the earth we still face this this bottomlessness it seems that comes from it just seems to come from nowhere at times we're not even expecting it we're not anticipating it from from the places and people that it comes through but it but but it shows up routinely throughout our history and it's and in my opinion it's beginning to manifest itself again in an even greater way and manner in this modern age and modern time that we're living in right now um and politically speaking and and we all know that you know uh, the political winds of of favor have never really gone and out gone in our direction as a people no matter where we've been scattered to through to, to throughout the diaspora but two scriptures, really three, actually came to my mind that I wanted to talk about. The first is uh, to to address this thing, uh, this this idea of bottomlessness, like bottomlessness. Um, the first is found in Acts, and uh, it's in Acts, Acts chapter seventeen. Let me just turn it real quick. I thought I had a thumbnail. Forgive me. I apologize. You ain't got to memorize. I don't have this one memorized, Tank. Of, mi of many that I do, this is not one of them. And <laughs> it's so hilarious. All right. So in Acts chapter 17, we read here, this is Paul when he's over at Mars Hill. And Paul is speaking because he's been he's been going about looking at the different monuments and so on dedicated to various gods. And Paul decides he's going to speak up about this one monument called to the unknown God. And he says, um, for as I passed by and beheld your, your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, uh, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him. And, and, and I declare unto you, said, God made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth all life and breath in all things. And he hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek Yah and if happily might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us. And so I, I, I wanted to start there because it leads us back to uh, to Adam and, uh, and, and, and I would like to touch on that a bit as far as the boundaries that the Most High set from the beginning when he created man but this scripture goes is even more specific because it says the most high set boundaries around man around each and every man even to the point of determining what time and what date you would be born in what era you would be born in for the purpose of positioning you in uh, us in a position placing us in a position where we might grope for and find him there, 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 there's a there's a there's an intent on the most high's yah on the most high yah's uh, from the most high yah to see to it that he puts us in the optimal position in order to find him even in history and time 
and I began to view that in the way of of um uh, of the boundaries that the Most High has set up. Even for creation, there's always a boundary. Even scripture talks about remove not the ancient boundaries. The second scripture that came to my mind was this one in Isaiah uh, uh, chapter 5 and, and uh, in verse uh, 14. The Most High is speaking to his people. I'll start in 13. It says, therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, Hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he and he that rejoices shall descend into it. This idea that the most high he's he's equipped hell itself to open up her mouth without measure, a, 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 a bottomlessness. This 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 uh how do I say it? This idea that there even the most high has created boundaries, but he's even given a boundary to hell. And that, that boundary is you're going to be limitless. You can be without bound. You're going to be, it, it, I'm going to open you up and, 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 and allow you to increase without measure. The third scripture is this one is found in Revelations. And I want to, in Revelations chapter, chapter nine. And I know we all know this one. Revelations chapter nine. Yeah. Yeah. In Revelation chapter 9, this is this is um, John speaking. He says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth, uh, uh, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the field, or I'm sorry, the grass of the earth, neither anything, neither, neither anything, ne neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Yah in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the men. And so the mo we see here the Most High unleashes something by way of this angel Apollyon and allows him to open up a bottomless pit. And the things that come out of this bottomless pit are so reprobate. They're so without measure in their intent to destroy that he has to put a command on them. It is, it's, it's like their nature is to kill everything. Mm -hmm. And if they're not commanded to stop at a certain point, there, 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 is, no, there is no limit to how bottomless they will go. And it just, it, 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 it causes me, it caused my mind to, 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 to ponder the bottomlessness of our enemy. And, and is it is there any likeness to the bottomlessness of, the, of our enemy's hearts to the things that the scriptures describe in the way of bottomlessness? Because the Bible says that he created man and put him in time in a certain place in, in, in time in order that he might grow for the father. But we find that we're continually facing an enemy that we don't even recognize at times, an enemy that routinely takes us by surprise through 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 their actions in nature that that we that we don't see coming, and we don't, and we're always stunned and shocked at this bottomlessness that they're able to fall to, even after we have thought they were friend or or, or fellow. So I want to open that. I want to open it up to the to the group. I'd like for you all to just help me with this one because that that bottomlessness that you brought up, Kendall, in the way of our enemies, really just struck a chord with me. Yeah, you know. So when we when we start talking about bottomlessness, bottomlessness, <laughs> you, you know, I'm 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 looking at it just strictly from. How the most most high starts at the beginning with Genesis when he talked about there's two seeds. 
And when he talked about there's two seeds, he said there's Satan's seed and then there's the, or the enemy's seed and then there's, uh, you know, the, the seed of the woman. In other words, there's his seed and then there's Satan's seed and, and there's people. And it's difficult for us, I think, to um, to come to, you know, come to the conclusion of bottomlessness for for anybody. Because we don't we don't seem to relish in that bottom, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, so when we start talking about, you know, our enemy, who's following a whole different spirit, who who has a whole different agenda, and he's following a spirit that says, you know, you know, whose father says we came, uh, the only thing we came to do was to uh, steal, and to kill, and to to, to destroy. And so we have to we have to grasp the, the concept that there are so-called people on this earth who that's they're following their father. And their whole idea is to just, you know, steal, kill, and to destroy. And we see it, we see it every day, we see it over and over because we ask the question, uh, you know, where where is the repentance? You know, where is when is there gonna be change? You know, and I see how, you know, in this, you were talking about the political season, in this political season, you you know, it, it's shocking to a lot of people because we were basically, the excuses uh, that have been given uh, while we're on the verge of, 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 of an attempted genocide of our people, that the excuses that they gave, the reason they voted for the person who, who, would, who would institute this, you know, well, uh, it's the economy. Or it's this, or or, or 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 it's that, and you say so. The potential of my genocide compared to an extra fifty cent in gas, it, that that's that's what you sold me out for. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you so you start looking at these things, and these are people who call themselves, you know, believers or or whatever. So you know, so as I study scripture. And it goes back to I think the original text that that you read. That is is the, the only bound there is Yah Himself. He's He's the restrainer. He's the one that stops it. He's the one that set the bounds, and He has to set the bounds because they wouldn't stop. If if they would stop, there would then there would be no need for a bound. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so you know, he has to set the bounds because you know they would they they wouldn't stop. You know, even when we, we'll get in a little bit more in the book of Enoch. You know, he makes the comment in the book of Enoch that he 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 gave permission for so many of us to perish. He set the bounds, but then he said they went beyond the, the bounds that he had set. And so he was saying he's gonna the overseers or the watchers or the or the, or, the, or the ones that's over the nations the seventy Elohim that's over the nation he said he's gonna punish them because they were the watchers of it they over they were supposed to oversee this but they allowed it to go too far our punishment to go too far so the you know the idea of bottomlessness is, is is there uh, you know I'm a, I'm gonna push it over to somebody else but there's some scripture that I want to read it it's like it, it's 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 such it's it's to the degree that he has to show us in the book of Revelations and the scripture I'm going to read in Second Ezra that no matter how much punishment he put on them, they still won't repent. They still won't repent. And so, yeah, so I, I'll uh, kick it off to somebody else. But yeah, that's that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with uh, Yah being the restrainer. Yeah. And... Um, and Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I didn't cut you off. no, go ahead. You said something a minute ago about not repenting. And I was, and yeah, it's, it's good because I was just thinking about, and it just ran across my mind, how the bottomlessness seems to be uh, hand, hand in hand with unrepentance. Uh, the bottomlessness seems to be hand in hand with pride. Um, and, and the scripture that came to my mind is Romans 2. Um, specifically, you know, as you get down to the, around the 15th verse, I believe, 
uh, where it talks about um, the 13th verse, but I'll start at 12. For as many as have sinned without law shall also, shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before Yah, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these have not the law, are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the, me the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when Yah shall judge the secrets of men by Yahusha HaMashiach, according to my gospel. Um, but Romans 2 speaks to what's the boundary that those who belong to Yah and those he foreknew, those that eventually he knows that will find their way back to him. There are boundaries there. But then you have those who don't belong to the Most High. You have those who are who belong to Satan, who are Satan's seed, who are the enemy, because their purpose here, it, it serves the ultimate will of the Most High, but their purpose is not to is, is not to reconcile back to Yah, but to stay turned away from him. So there's this, and then they won't repent. I mean, just think about it. When when Christ returns, there are going to be a, a large number of people who are going to sit there and act like they have the power to fight against the Messiah. That's that's pride, that's unrepentance, that's ego, and that's the enemy. The enemy, that's Satan. That that is that is evil. That is not righteousness. That is not holiness. That is not someone who belongs to Christ. That is not someone who has a boundary, who has the law in, in their heart, who who's who has Christ in their heart. And when I say law, I'm not saying uh you know the following the 613 Mosaic laws, but following the way, the truth, and the life, following Christ and what he did and all that he accomplished in his in his salvation for us and living for him. Um, that's what I mean by following the law, being Christ. So bottomlessness, it's it's and it, it equates to a synonymous um so, so being synonymous to unrepentance and Pride. Pride comes before a fall and unrepentance. We see it. We're seeing it right now. You have all these people being put into these positions who have boldly stated what they are opposed to, who they are against, what they are going to do, what they won't do. They boldly said it and are unrepentant in saying it. You have a preacher from Arkansas, quote unquote, who's now being appointed, who thinks we are not human who thinks that, uh, who believes we're not human, who also says we're not citizens. How can you say something like that if you are, if you have boundaries according to the most high? How can you fix your mouth? So that tells me that even though he claims to be preacher man and this, that, and the other, he's bottomless. And now his daughter is, a, is the governor of the same state that he was governor. And, and she's just as bottomless too because a loud fly out of her mouth just as quick as, as, as the breath comes out of her mouth. So... We are seeing it. The appointment of bottomlessness. It's to take these positions that, 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 that have no boundaries of what they would do. I digress. Yeah. I mean, you know, then you 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 in the book of, of Revelations, you were saying, you know, that you can see the nations at the end end of the day rise up to fight the Messiah. Think about that. That you're fighting against Yah himself. Trying. That, that, that's not a bottom. I mean, it's right. one thing fighting against and knowing who he is. You know, I was reading, uh, once again, I said Second Ezra. Not only, uh, but the scriptures, you know, I think it's Psalm 83, it talks about that, that many of those angels that are supposed to be watching over everything now are going to end up, you know, coming back down to the earth you know, because he's going to cast some, cast the angels, you know, Satan, his angels down to the earth. And he said, they're going to end up dying like men. So then I'm reading in the second Ezra and it says that the people are going to kill their own star. In other words, the people are going to kill their, when that, when their God get cast down uh, to the earth, it, out of their own anger and, and hatred and pride and all that, they're going to end up killing their own, what they call their own God. 
And even they said they, they're going to be afraid, but they still going to try to kill Yeshua anyway. Now, that's the bottom. Instead of repenting and saying, we messed up. Mm -hmm. Well, we ain't got no truck, but we got to try to kill him. <laughs> you know, so there's no, there's no stopping that. Then I'm going to say this and I kick it off. The world spends 1,000 years with the Messiah. 1,000 years, peace on earth, blessings to every nation that comes up and, and acknowledges the Feast of Tabernacle, and acknowledges a thousand years. And at the end of that thousand years, he still tests the hearts and he releases uh he releases their father from the bottomless pit, who has been there for a thousand years. And when he comes out, they start a war with Yeshua again, who had been ruling and reigning with righteousness for a thousand years. Eight of, eight of the blessing saw his glory, saw how he worked, saw his righteousness, saw how, how he, he did everything right and they treated everyone the correct way and still said, I yep. want to kill him. Right. There's no bottom there. No, but the Most High allows it. He, he, he allows it, and, and it, it doesn't bother him one bit. Matter of fact, not only does he allow it, but he's going to use it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he's going to use it to get our attention. We, we've, we've talked about this before, how the Most High knows exactly what it's going to take to get our attention. And as you were talking um, earlier, D-Mac, and... and um, <clears throat> And Dante, this description Mark came to mind, um, Mark 13. It says, when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it should not be, let the reader understand. Let, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go back inside to retrieve anything from his house. And let no one in the field return for his cloak. So we, we we've got this we've got this bottomless person this person that's representing the bottom or coming up from the bottom now standing in the temple and it says how miserable those days will be for pregnant and nursing mothers pray that this will not occur in the winter for those days will be days of tribulation unmatched from the beginning of Elohim's creation until now so we we think things are bad now. We, we 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 might be what 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 we're seeing right now, what we're experiencing, what we believe um, we might be experiencing in the near future, based upon some of the things that are happening over over recent recent history of the last few days. We we think things are going to be bad, but th this is this is giving us some insight. When we get closer to the bottom of the bucket of this bottomless bucket. <laughs> Those days of tribulation unmatched from the beginning of Elohim's creation until now and never to be seen again. For if Yahuwah had not cut those days short, nobody would be saved. But for the sake of us, the elect, whom he has chosen, he has cut them short. That's amazing. You know, so we, we, we marvel we marvel over the, the bottomlessness of evil. And we see the most high is using this evil. And then in the in, in in the process of him using this evil, he's going to use that evil to extend his mercy to us and to satisfy, you know, the the or fulfill rather the ends that he has declared will be the end that he declared from the beginning. That's amazing to me. I want you know, I want to talk about thank you for sharing that, Hank and Dante. I, I guess, you know, and I'm not struggling with it in, in any sense. I'm I'm just I'm meditating on this thing. I'm meditating on the father's use of bottomlessness, the father's permissive will to allow bottomlessness to expand in the hearts of men. I'm, I'm just meditating on this thing. 
Because in 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 many ways, it's 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 difficult. It's challenging to to fathom that there's a use for. It. I mean, when we're talking about our everyday our everyday existence, it's, it's ch when you see how utterly destructive bottomlessness is. It, it reminds me of what scientists often talk about when it comes to antimatter. That 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 just one little thumbnail of antimatter is enough basically to blow the whole planet up. And I'm 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 exaggerating in some sense, but maybe I'm not. But this idea of matter meeting antimatter and or antimatter coming into matter and totally annihilating everything that it touches, this that it really exists. And that even Yeshua, as you mentioned, Hank, even Yeshua warned against it. He 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 was warning us, he was warning us of a of of, of, of a bottomlessness to come to be expressed that we need to be aware of. And we are, in my opinion, and I, I'm not one of those, uh, you know, the sky is falling, but if we look at the signs of the times, we are on the precipice, in my mind, of seeing that expression, that, that, that being expressed again against, against us as a people. Um, what comes to my mind, but, but, but at the same time, what came to my mind when I was, think, when I was thinking about this thing was, in Romans, where, where Paul is speaking and he's talking about the limitlessness of the most high's love to reach to find those to reach those whom love. There's no height, no depth. The, that, that there's a there's a there's a bottomlessness and, and bottomless as bottomless as it is, <laughs> it's it's not deep enough to to abscond from the reach of the most high. For those whom he loves, and I, I don't know. I've just kind of spent this week meditating on it. I know I sound redundant, but I, I, I really wanted us to flesh this thing out and 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 and, and get a feel for what you all had to say about that. But the idea that you what you express, Hank, that the Most High is using this circumstance, using this bottomlessness, he, that there's nothing that goes. There's nothing that goes to waste in the most highs program. Everything gets cycled and recycled and 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 used. Even the even the stuff that's considered discard is he'll use that to 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 bring his own back to him. And there's no limit to his to his passion and his love to make that happen. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I mean, just, just hitting back off what Hank was saying, he he doesn't. You know, everything happens for a reason. You know, he says all things. You know, work. And so I was, I remember reading in the wisdom of Solomon where he talks about that to, to a degree. He talks about how, uh, he, he's allowing us to see how he didn't just utterly, uh, destroy the enemy initially, how he gave them time, how he gave them this grace, how he gave them this mercy, uh, to repent, even though he knew they wouldn't. I mean, he says, and he said, even though I know they won't repent, I'm giving them time. And he said, in part, this is for you, too. He says, so I want you to watch me work. And I want you to watch and see how gracious I am. I want you to watch and see how I didn't destroy them right off, you know, so that you'll understand, uh, you know, what you're going, you know, and that you'll desire to have that same type of relationship with me, even though you are repenting. You know what I'm saying? And so it just, you know, his work is amazing. You know, he tells us where sin abound, you know, grace abound, even more. So as bottomless as sin is, or as bottomless as people go, it wasn't, it wasn't so much of a bottom that he wouldn't have received the repentance that he died well enough, that he shed his blood well enough to cover anybody's, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, sins or whatever, but that they wouldn't receive that, you know? And so nobody would be able to say he didn't die well enough, that his grace wasn't strong enough, that even though uh, they were bottomless, his grace was bottomless, you know? So there'll be no, there's no excuse uh, that they'll have. And so that's that's what uh, that's what we're gonna get out of this. That we're gonna see, uh, watching them, just how gracious 
Uh, he really, he really is. So how do we position ourselves here and now? How, how, how do, what, what I, I, it's, it's clear. It sound, almost sounds cliche to say I stand. I stand on the on on the scriptures, and but and we do. But when it comes to that, that the prac the, the the practical application of how we position ourselves, does anyone have anything to to, to submit for that? Well, well I could, if I could kind of share a little bit of what I think you're asking um, with respect to positioning ourselves. Um, I remember the day that my son and daughter uh, were baptized. I had a little chat with them and the chat, uh, try to keep it as basic as I could so that they would understand. And, you know, being a teenager and preteen that when we choose Yahusha and we commit and, and devote our lives to him, that is, that is not a temporary thing. That is all in or all out and that you seek the scriptures you pray for understanding and you continually do that and trust the most high to build you into who he who he, he wants you to become but in that you have to always be willing to let go of everything here for him including your life because when you're dealing with bottomlessness, it may come to who do you serve? Choose you this day. If you say you serve Yahusha, then you must be willing to die for Yahusha. Or do you serve this entity over here? You got to be willing. So how you prepare yourself, it's a spiritual preparation. It's a mental preparation. And it's a it, and it's a it's a it's a, a full holistic preparation of yourself to be willing to let go of anything in this world. Because if we contemplate anything, whether it be your job, whether it be family, friends, loved ones, things, stuff, church, whatever it may be. If you just give give an inch of of well, what about this? You know, I, I can't leave them. Well, he what what does the word tell us? He who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, so I hope I I kind of gave some decent food for thought with preparation, but it's just a preparation to to to. To literally be like Job, though he slayed me, yet will I trust him? And, yeah. and yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, you know, and it's it's, you know, that's one of the reasons, you know, I I'm uh, you know I'm passionate about teaching the way that I do, you know, uh, to show the prophecies, to show the picture shadows and types all the way throughout Scripture, to show that it was him all along, um. Because the more we hear those type things, we understand when we read scripture, we see scripture. It's alive, you know. It's it's not just word, but it's it's, it's actually him. It's it's alive, and what that does is for me, it builds it builds my faith in everything that he says, right? Everything that uh, it comes out of his mouth, you know, is valid. Mm -hmm. And so, because of that, it helps me to see beyond what can happen even if something happens to me you know because because he, he's because he says stuff like that we we just brush over and we pretend like we can't go through it he says stuff like don't fear those who are able to kill the body okay so he's telling me right there that that might happen he said but you know fear the one who is able to destroy both body and soul yeah. And so I'm going back and I'm looking at the first people, the first uh, uh, the black Hebrews who who ran into Nero, you know, and 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 the persecution that they uh, withstood under Nero, how he was taking the Hebrews and he was dipping them in wax and he was putting them up on poles and burning them for candles. Said the whole courtyard was just us burning. 
you know, and 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 the tortures and all of the things that the the, the first of us who believed uh, went through. And so, I, you know, and I and I, I wonder, you know, I say, okay, this this false teaching that we get that that we you know have been given over the years, like you know, just the touching and, 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 you know, just, you know, just you verbalize something and it, it poof, it happens and, you know, claiming, claiming it. it and claiming it and all of these things have put us in the position to where uh, it's anti-gospel because it's the prevention of pain. It's the prevention of suffering. It's the pre prevention of going through anything. It's the prevention of going, you know, losing anything. You know, uh, you know, when, but when Paul was talking, he said, you know, I'm learning, uh, you know, regardless of what condition I'm in. He said, I'm learning how to be content, whether I got some or I don't have something, whether I'm a base or whether I'm a bound, whatever the situation is, I'm learning to trust, you know, uh, in the most high. In the, and then that's that's easy to say. But experientially. When mm -hmm. it starts happening, like you were saying, mm -hmm. you know, it messes with your mind. And, you know, I'm watching these people today politically, and I know what they're trying to do. I know where mm -hmm. they're headed. We're all asleep, and we think that they're not doing what they're doing. Or they're just saying, no, they have a plan for us. A very negative plan for us. They are serious about that plan. And I don't know how far the Most High is going to allow it to go because we're not awake yet as a people. We're not repenting yet as a people. And I know where he is, so I'm asking the question, how far is he going to have to go with us to get our attention so that we cry out? Am I making sense? So Yeah, that, yeah. yeah so that's, that's where... That's where I am with the thing. How far will we have to go as a people for him we, to get our attention to where we begin to cry out because Pharaoh is treating us harshly? I think we have. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Hank. Um, I think we're seeing it, like you said. Uh, I, I think we're seeing a, a glimpse of how far. Yah is going to allow it to go to get our attention. Um, you know, if if Yah is allowing bottomlessness to position themselves in positions that that affect, that can affect populations and ethnicities and groups of people, I think we're we're seeing. Uh, one, we're seeing the the delusion of the masses. But we're also seeing, you know, how how much of Israel is still asleep and unwilling, unwilling to to awaken to the truth. And so knowing that, seeing that and also paying attention and noticing what Yah is allowing to position itself. And what they're capable of doing. Yeah. To yeah. us that that should blow our minds as to the level of one how how tired Yah is of our hard headedness and stiff neck, but also how merciful he is. I mean, I don't want to hog the conversation, but I'm just I just think back on the the same people. Okay, we got we got kicked out of Spain and Portugal. So much torture. But we we fast forward two or three hundred years. We, we're in the eighteen nineteen hundreds, and we have a uh, this king that that rises up, and he's in the he's from that same area that Portugal, same people basically, same people, and he's over, uh, you know they're they're over the Congo, and they basically kill slaughter over ten million people. This was this was like you know, hundred years ago, whatever. Ten million people, and then the ones that didn't kill, they cut off their hand. Think about it; they would cut off their hands, 
And then now, even today, they commemorate it with chocolate hands. Chocolate hands. They still make chocolates today of a hand. Think about that. Okay, so the Most High didn't move then, you know, 10 million. And you say, how bad can it get before before he moves? You know, uh, so, you, you know, we've been kicked out of so many countries and all of the all of the things that started ramping up and I'm reading this stuff. And I'm like, this is what's happening now. The things that were happening then are the things that's happening now as prerequisites to us being kicked out of the other countries. But we don't think it can happen, just like we didn't think it could happen then. You know, and so it just it blows my mind. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand it off. Hank, you about to say something? Uh, yeah. I mean, I was just I was just saying that it's a hard conversation to have. Um, I mean, I was in a um, a chat with some college friends um, last last night about some of the announcements that were made in the selections to the cabinet. And, and and so, you know, collectively everybody agreed, man, we've got some tough days ahead. And as we, you know, started moving in the, you know, towards the conversation and, you know, I'm trying to call the spade a spade for what it is. It, it just seemed like the you know the, the 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 group started moving away from that aspect of the conversation you know they, they didn't want they, it just didn't want to accept you know that you know that there is a conspiracy going on that's aimed against us you know there is a there's a coming together of of, of people um against us and so you know one one of my friends was talking and you know, and he was like, "Hey, I, you know, I, I believe that you know we've got some really, really tough days ahead. Uh, you know, we, you know, we you know, I mean, possibly this is a dictatorship that we see forming. Uh, you know, you know, possibly we see evidence, some strong evidence of, of you know, you know, um, white supremacy. You know, you know, it's really starting to, you know, take you know, take the next step in this in this uh, evolution." And he, he he makes a comment. I don't want to be pessimistic. And I just and when I when I saw the word, I just felt I said, "That's the enemy. That's the enemy." You know, trying to throw us off course. You know, by you know labeling someone who is trying to uh, you know you know uh, establish what's actually happening from the point of view of the Most High. You, this this name that comes with it. You know, you're going to be pessimistic. You know, we, you know, everybody wants to be optimistic. And so, you know, by being optimistic, you you, you never talk about anything that's right and true. You, you know, you, you talk about only thing those only thing those, those things are only going to make you feel good. It's going to make everybody feel good. And if you don't feel good, then there's something wrong with the person that's, you know, saying, you know, that's giving the message. That's a problem. It's a problem. It's a huge, huge problem because nobody wants to hear this. They, no, nobody wants to hear that there are evil people in the world and they're coming out of this bottomless bucket. Nobody wants to hear that the Most High is allowing this evil to exist in the world for two reasons. One is to get our attention, but two, so that his justice will prevail because he is both a loving Elohim and he is a just Elohim. And those things, have, they, they're they not mutually exclusive. They happen together. And so he's allowing, nobody wants to hear, nobody wants to hear that things are going to get worse. Nobody wants to hear that the same people who've allowed me to have a little bit of status that I have, if I've got any status in this world, it's, it's been allowed. Nobody wants to hear those same people might not want me to have it, might try to come take that away from me. Nobody wants to hear that this whole notion that, you know, that, you know, that, um, <clears throat> That this is going to get worse. Nobody wants to hear. It. And, and and when when you when you say those things, um, we hear the words like pessimism. And I, and I and I woke up this morning. It was heavy on my heart, and I was asking the Most High about it. And uh, and I was asking Father, how do we even pray? And and, and I, I think Dante. I mean, D Mac. This is the question I believe that you know at the heart of the question that you were asking. 
How do we pray about this thing that the Most High says it's going to happen? I'm not going to resist being just. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to resist loving you and, and, and wrapping my arms around my elect and ensuring that my covenant with you uh, is upheld. I'm not going to resist those things. So how do we pray about these things that have to happen, but it doesn't look good for us? You know, we, you know, in, in Romans, in Romans chapter um, seven, verse number, no, Romans chapter two, I think it is. What was that? No, Romans chapter eight. Where am I going? Romans chapter eight, verse number 35. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Mashiach? Shall trouble or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sore? Now, it, 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 he's Paul is establishing these things are going to happen. <laughs> they're, they're, they're absolutely going to happen. But when they happen, does any of these things separate us from his love? As it is written, for your sake, we shall we face death all day long. That's not op no, that doesn't lend itself to optimism. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered, knowing all these things. And this is to your point, Kendall. You know, when we, when we step back and we have this larger expanded view, he said, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Elohim that is in Hamashiach, our Yahuwah. I, I, I want to seize on that, Hank. I want to seize on that passage and what you just said. First of all, thank you. Excellent. But last week, Kendall, you made a statement, two profound statements, the bottomless one, just the one that stuck in my craw and I couldn't get it out. But you also said that brand of Christianity. That brand of Christianity. I want to read something real quick. Hold, and I want to juxtapose it against what we just read. In, in in Romans chapter 8. This is um in John chapter 16. This is Yeshua speaking in verse 1. It says, These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended, that they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth Yah a service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me and none of you asketh me whither thou goest. Because, but because I have said these things unto you, you sorrow, your, your, you, unto you sorrow hath filled your heart. The brand of Christianity that you read just now, Hank, in Romans 8, is not the brand of Christianity, I should say, yes, is not the brand of Christianity that's being taught us or taught to Israel in the places of their worship right now. The, 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 like you said, we've been taught every name it and claim it. You know, this so this this we, we talk about that often. But the brand of Christianity that 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 that's being taught in the church does not talk about the suffering that has to happen for His people and anyone who call on His name. And yet Yeshua right here is saying these things are going to happen. He's saying very clearly. That if you're going to follow me, truly follow me, then you are going to suffer in your flesh. You're going to suffer loss. You're going to suffer. If, you, if you're if mine, if you're one of my sheep, you're going to suffer. But the brand of Christianity that's being taught in the church is also the brand of Christianity that Yeshua is talking about right now. Where it says, and they're going to kill you and think they're, giving, they think they're doing a favor to the most high. Yeah. 
Yeah. The, the mm -hmm. brand of Christianity that's out there right now is full of distractions. And to your point, Kendall, earlier, I believe those distractions are, you know, things that's keeping us, uh, keeping our people asleep. Yeah, yeah. De yeah, definitely a lot of distractions going on, Hank. I, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, yeah. this, this has been really a really good and, and deep um, lesson to our discussion tonight. Um, you know, I just to, to touch a little bit on on just the, the weapons of mass distraction that that are out there right now. Just think about how many uh, amongst un, unawakened Yasharel that are afraid to explore anything outside of what feels good, you know, to explore anything outside of of that, you know, that 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 type of of, of churchianity teaching that says, you know, one, you're going to get to skip all of, you know, the the the, the test and the trials and 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 you're going to get to skip all of this and go go away and, and disappear. They they don't they don't know and they don't want to know. And then because I've had conversations with people where, you know, I, I've asked the question, you know, what do you think about? And then I, I asked them, and it's a biblical question, whether whether it's prophecy, whether it's things going on right now, whether it's, you know, the the things that are that that are happening before our eyes and that are to come, and been told, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Years ago, I did a quick survey. Um, before I was even awakened, and I asked a question, part of the survey was a question, and it said, if what you know now is not the truth, uh, is not correct, would you want to know the truth? And people responded in that survey and said no. And it had to do with churchianity, you know, church, what they're being taught in the church. And even then, I was flabbergasted at someone willingly you know saying that if what they know as far as the scriptures and the word of, of yagos is not correct but they want to know the truth and they said no we're dealing with a more profound level of that now because the distractions have proliferated into all avenues and and they're so distracting to where anything that that bucks it or anything that 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 kind of go that goes against that grain, they resist it, and 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 then so back to the earlier point that I made with, we have to understand that Yah is allowing a level of bottomlessness to get in position because of the level of hard headedness and stiff neckedness and disobedience and unrepentance abounding right now nobody wants to repent nobody wants to wants to turn from their wicked ways no one wants to do anything outside of what their flesh is dictating and i'm not saying any of us has it perfect but there is a difference between striving each day to seek yah with with a, a humble heart to do what is right to, to do those things that Yah says, do fast, pray, repent, versus someone who, well, I'm not sorry for doing that. I wanted to do it. I like it. You know, there, there, there's a difference between that. There's a difference between someone whose heart yearns after Yah versus someone whose mouth just says it, but their heart yearns after what the world has for them. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you know, yeah, where, you, where, yeah, where your I heart mean, is, there will your treasure be, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's powerful. I mean, <clears throat> go back to what tie that in. Go back to what the Mac had read the scripture, and and I'm, I'm I was listening to it, you know, and, and I thought about this before as well. What was what was going through their mind when he said, "When they kill you, think about that." You you send up you talking to your Messiah, the Savior, the one who's gonna take you know who who's who who said your mind and he says when they kill you <laughs> wait a minute hold up right right <laughs> when they kill you when when yeah. when, when not not if not if when. but when i'm telling you right. they're gonna kill you you're not gonna stop it when they kill you when you know and you know and so 
he was that, and that explains a lot too. When they took him, uh, not long after that, and they and and they took Yeshua and they were beating on him and they were doing all the things. No wonder they ran because he had already told them when they kill you, <laughs> you know. So, uh, you know, so the idea of of having to do that, and so he he's really trying to prep our minds, prep our hearts beyond what we see and what we, you know all these things you know that like we could be like him you know he tells us pick up our cross follow him he said but but for the joy that was set for me he he, he you get what I'm saying I I endured that thing you know and you know I despised the shame because I knew what was on the other side of it and so, and so our faith is what's going to get us to think about the other side of what we're believing in and trusting in his promises and, and the willingness to go through what we got to go through. And that's why few going to find that. A lot of people going to look at this and listen to this and say, man, I ain't doing all that. I don't know what they talking about. Let me turn this off. This They talk crazy. Uh, you know, and so that's, you know, that that's what's going to, that's what's going to happen. But, you know, I have to talk about these things because there's a few people out there that want to know and want to grow their faith to the point where, you know, they like Paul, when he got to the end of his run, he said, well, you know what? I ran a good race and I fought a good fight. You know, it's a few out there. And so you got to talk to those people who, who, who's willing to endure uh, you know, those types. I'm going to read this right here, and, and y'all probably heard me read this before. But this is when the Christians came over with Columbus. This was the bishop that came over with Columbus. It was the same bishop that recommended the Hebrews or the Jews instead of the Moors. Same bishop. So he's 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 recording what's happening. He, he said, he said, in the testimony proved the mild and specific temperament of the natives, but our work was to exasperate, ravage, heal, mangle, and destroy. I think this was in this was in Cuba. This this was when they went into Cuba. He said, and the Christians with their horses and swords and pikes, the Christians, y'all hear what I'm saying? And the Christians with their horses and swords and pikes began to carry out massacres and strange cruelties against them. Talking about the natives. They they attacked the towns they spared neither the children, nor the age, nor pregnant women, nor women in childbed, not only stabbing them and dismembering them, but cutting them to pieces as if dealing with sheep in the slaughterhouse. They laid bets as to who with one stroke of the sword could split a man in two or could cut off his head or spill out his entrance with a single stroke of the pipe. They took infants from their mother's breast, snatching them by the legs and pitching them, pitching them head first against the crags, snatched them by the arms, threw them into the rivers, roaring with laughter and saying, as the babies fell into the water, boy, there you offspring of the devil. Other infants they put to the sword, along with their mothers and anyone else who happened to be nearby. They made some low, wide gallows on which they hang the victim's feet, almost touched the, the, the hang the victim's feet, almost touched the ground, stringing up their victims and lots of 13, watch this, in memory of our Redeemer and his 12 apostles. Then set burning wood at their feet and thus burned them alive. To others they attached straw or wrapped their bodies in straw and set them afire. While still others, all those they wanted to capture alive, they cut off their hands and hung them around the victim's neck, saying, go now, carry the message. Meaning, take the news to the Indians who have fled to the mountains. They usually dealt with the chieftains and nobles in the following way. They made a grid of rods which they placed on uh, forked sticks, then lashed the victims to the grid and lighted a smoldering fire underneath so that little by little, as those captives screamed in despair and torment, their souls would leave them. Now, that's that's rough to hear. But there's more. This is what they did. They almost completely depopulated all of the islands and all these things. That's you see what I'm saying bottomless. So 
and then celebrate, have the audacity to celebrate the holiday. Wow. And Just, the sin. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, just go ahead. I was just gonna say, you know, just celebrating the holiday. And, and the descendants of these people live today. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 to go to your point, uh, you know, I was reading a, I was reading an account of um, a European doctor who um, had a had a habit of taking corpses. They say they were corpses. Corpses of, of black folks. And skinning them. And, and, and placing their hides and creating shoes with the, with, with, with the hides and stuff like that. I remember reading that. I, I think you may have posted something similar to that well, a while back, but I remember reading that. And that there were book binders that specialized in this mm -hmm. sort of stuff. And it, 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 I, I remember I have a book downstairs right now um, on, on, on Black history in America. And I'm sure everybody has seen this photo. It's a photo of a public lynching. And in this public lynching, there's, 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 there's children in the crowd, but there's this one girl, this one girl that's looking in the camera, looking up at the corpse. And, they, and you, catch this, you catch this smirk on her face it's just the, it's the most it's the most grievous thing you could possibly. And I'm thinking mm -hmm. to myself, a child, so a child, and it's this expression is coming out of her of satisfaction, but yet a desire to see more at the same time. And so when you're talking about this 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 destruction that that seems. Hardwired, you know. I remember looking at uh, 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 those. Remember, I was a kid as a child. Used to watch those Japanese monster movies, and in the Japanese monster movies, my favorite was always Gamera. But the Japanese monster movies, there was always like uh, this monster that was rampaging, something that was happening, and they were always and it. And then there was always that one sleeping monster that that was that they were trying to awaken in order to conquer the other monster, so to speak. And it's like we've been, we, we're, we're kind of at that point where there's this sleep, this monster that has been a monster in the past, but somehow fell asleep. <laughs> and that monster is being summoned again. It's being awakened. And we're feeling the rumblings of this thing becoming conscious and beginning to move its limbs on the earth. And uh, it's... Uh, my wife and I, my wife had a conversation and, and I, we were talking about this and, and she was like, you know, I just got this feeling of this, this heaviness, this heaviness that's on. And I, I said, you know, I, I've been feeling a lot the same way. We, we, we've been praying about that, but something is coming. Something's coming. Something's yeah. coming. And we got to be, we got to be preparing ourselves for what's coming. And as you mentioned, Hey, you know, and as you mentioned, Kendra and Dante, that it whatever is coming may be in order to face it, it, it the cost of facing it may be us giving up our very lives for whatever it is that's coming and i think we just need to be prepared for that as a people that's just my mindset yeah, yeah nobody and, wants to hear that though <laughs> no they don't uh you're right you're right hank they, nobody really wants to hear you know letting go of you know all of the you know, what I've accomplished, what I've accumulated type, you know, that type of thinking. But there's there's another thing to to consider, um, at least to, to just kind of give it some thought. Be prepared uh, in, in respect to being prepared. That is to literally no longer be dependent on the system that is attempting to control every facet of your life. The, you know, figure out how to disconnect from the world system if needed. You know, you got to figure it out. And, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out because we become so dependent on certain things. So how do we best prepare when we have, have these entities that have influenced so much of these devices that we have become so accustomed to and dependent on 
to where, you know, I remember when there was no cell phone, no pagers, uh, when there was just one phone in the house and, and it was a, a long extension cord. You had to go and try to hide. And when you want to talk to a girl or, or, you know, your big brother was talking to his girlfriend, he didn't want you listening in. But anyway, I remember that. I remember no internet. I remember, you know, uh, older sibling leaving to go out and then coming back and he just was back by his curfew. There was no check-in, no text message. No, he just trusted. They went to where they were going. And then when I was old enough, my dad trusted that I was going where I said I was going and I came back home. Now, did I go where I said I was going most of the time? Not really. Um, you know, I was with my best friend, so we just kind of went, but yeah, blessed. His grace covered us, made it home safely. But what I say all that to say is that how easily we forget that we can act, we are able to, and we have operated and lived and thrived and survived without the system. We've done that, but we've never been able to do it properly without the most high. Something yeah. to think. Yeah, and that's key. I think I think in in the in the process of all this. For me, it's hearing from him. You know, I can think preparation first, but that's out of that's out of order. You know, because I can come up with you know I can come up with the same thing that some of these people who who think they're gonna uh, live through uh, the live through tribulation period. You know, they they got everything set up. I got my bunker. I got this. I got that. You know, that's that's a type of preparation. But is is it is it the, the the direction of the of the Most High? You know what I'm saying. So my goal is to hear what He's saying to me to do. I wanna I wanna have my relationship to the point where I'm hearing from Him. When to move, when not to move, when to sit down, you know, when to when they stand up, when to move, you know, just like He told them, you know, forty years before the armies came in, He said, "Listen," He said, uh, "When you see the armies come about Jerusalem, He said, run." into the mountains and the ones that survived were the ones that ran and remembered that prophecy and ran into the mountains and hid out you know in second baruch i got this here five fifty two six and seven he said he was he was he was going back and forth he was having this this conversation kind of about the enemies of uh of 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 israel uh baruch was uh trying to figure out why is it that you know you know you're letting the enemies do this to us i mean he was these same questions that we had and uh in this particular part of the conversation the uh, angel answered him and said enjoy yourselves in the suffering which you suffer now oh, wow he said for why do you look for the decline of your enemies because that was the focus. He said, prepare your soul. Yeah, yeah, I got to see. He said, prepare your soul for that which is kept for you. I got something for you. He said, prepare your soul for that and make ready your soul for the reward which is preserved for you. And when he said this, I fell asleep right there. Mm. That's powerful. Very powerful. And I think that if you know, I think, you know, out of all these things, you know, I send out these videos to do these things. I know y'all do your thing. To get us to understand, like, like the one I sent earlier today, that there's no bottom there. They're going to do what they're going to do. And unless most high steps in, you know, and say this is not part of the plan that I want, you know, they're going to they're going to go to the extremes with whatever they're going to go go through it with. And I want us to see that so that our dependence won't be up on their system, like you were saying, won't be up on their things, up on the, it'll be up on the most high. And if the most high want to use their system to do, you know, to move us to another place, he'll do that. If he wants us to move outside of the system in certain circumstances to do certain things, then he'll do that. He'll do that too. And uh, so that's where I, I count to be in, in the situation. Hope that makes sense. Good stuff, huh? Yeah, it, it does. I want to read a, a scripture on Jeremiah. You know, at, at the essence, at the at the very essence of you know, what we what the most I've been allowing us to do over the last few weeks, it's it's for me, it's just it's four brothers who just get on the computer and talk. 
and um and, and Kendall, you 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 had the vision, you had the leading, you, you had the direct, you know, direction from the most high, you know, to tape this and make it available, you know, to anybody who wants to see it. And so, you know, in the world where you know, you know, folks are podcasting left and right, trying to figure out ways to make money. <clears throat> for me, this is just four guys, four brothers getting on and talking. And so for me, there's no form or fashion. You know, I, I wish I didn't stutter as much as I do, but I I but I'm with my brother, so I'm I'm cool. I'm cool. If y'all cool with me stuttering, then I'm gonna stutter right on. So where's Aaron? If you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to, to today in this conversation, I, today I wish I had eloquent speech. I, I wish I had the ability to to share and speak in a compelling fashion um, for the situation that we're in so that people would get it and feel compelled to at least pay attention. I'm not saying repent because that ain't, that, ain't, that ain't my job to get anybody to repent, but hopefully just to be able to share some information where folks would just say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to you know, stay on from the beginning of this video all the way to the end so that I can take out of this message what I need to hear for the days ahead, but I don't have it. I don't have it. And so I, I was, you know, again, I was up this morning and, you know, talking to the most high and he, 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 he had me in the book of Jeremiah and, and I experienced this last night talking to my friends in Jeremiah chapter eight, starting at verse five. He asked the question, why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backslide? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. I hearkened and I heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rushes into the battle. And this is what really stood out to me. Verse seven, say, yea, the stork in the heaven knows her appointed times. And the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of Yahuwah. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and, that's, and that's what we're dealing, that's what we're dealing with. And I, I you know, I really think too, and I, we're, we're getting ready to close, close it, close it out. But I, you know, I often think about Jonah, and you know his his dilemma, the, the dilemma that he was in, because he was living amongst his enemy, and it was an enemy that the Most High wanted to have grace on. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, with me, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, this is a tough situation. I mean, the the Assyrians, man, they were brutal. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you know, you, when it came down to torture and stuff, man, they were brutal. I mean, they would just give you one example. One of the tortures that they had, they would they would grease a pole down real good, mm -hmm. a, a pole pointed, and they would put one of the orifices of your mm -hmm. body on, and they would watch it, watch your body while you still alive, just gradually. Slide down the pole. I know it's graphic, but I gotta get. I got Then one of the things they would do, they would put you in a in a um, in a, in, a, in some water. They put you in a in a, a big a big tub of water, and they would force feed you. Oh yeah, yeah. They would just force feed you and make you use the restroom in the, in the water and everything. Just keep you there for day to day. They would just keep feeding you, keep feeding you. You sitting there, and the and the maggots and the bugs and everything start growing and everything they just keep feeding they force feed you and and then the, the bugs will just eat you eat you alive. I know that's grotesque but but I'm just saying this is what Jonah I, I just want us to understand you know we often read things on the surface and we and and we make a judgment on what people are dealing with and so he was seeing he had seen all these cruelties he's dealing with that and then you know most high said I'm gonna, I'm gonna have mercy on these people you know, go tell them to if they, you know, I'm a bad judgment on, you know, and then the people repented. 
Y'all get what I'm saying? But before they repented, Jonah didn't want to do. He didn't want. He said, "You you gracious, and I know you're gracious, and you gonna you gonna mess around and forgive these folks, and, and or whatever." So he goes on his journey, and he gets on this boat, and the storm comes up. And everybody on the boat was in danger because he refused to do what he was supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all get what I'm saying? So they end up finally, you know, when they threw him over or whatever, you know, all the storms stopped and all that. And there's gonna be a point that that's coming that you know, I, I you know, th that the world gonna realize that all of these things are happening because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And they holding us, just like they, John was being held on their ship, and they're going to have to realize in order for us to get out of this situation, we got to let them go. Oh, yep. And they've got to repent and do what the Most High want them to do. And they're our hindrance right now in a lot of ways. We're both our hindrances. They don't want to let us go because they're receiving blessings because of us. And then we're caught up and we don't realize who we are as a people. And we, we caught up in their ways. And so we can't get free because we won't repent for being caught up in their way. And it's a two-way thing. And he's using both situations. And until they let go and until we walk away and repent, this thing is not going to get right so this is this is where we are right now he's trying to wake us up to who we are so that we can repent and he's trying to wake them up to who we are so that let us go yeah and Kendall, th those same things that jonah observed those same things happened in this country to us to different degrees and, and everything that you mentioned that was you know hard for me to hear you know they they happen here, and we're and, and we're being told we're being told that this is the direction we want things to go back again. Now MAGA has just become a buzzword, but you got folks going around saying "Make America Great Again," and we're being told uh, <clears throat> that this is what we want to go back to. And the stuff that we want to go back to was terrible for us. I mean, you're you're mentioning stuff that I just want to I, I want to plug up my ears. I don't want to hear that because I feel it as you're stating that. Mm -hmm. And 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 when we, we want to keep our eyes closed and act like it's just the same. We want to keep our ears closed and act like it's just politics. You know, they're they're just putting on a show. But the reality is. The, these are the core beliefs that people want to see reinstated and some of the actions that are associated with those core beliefs are not good for us. And we don't want to acknowledge it. Yeah. yeah. We, want to. Since we don't understand the, the, the bottom list. We don't. Yeah. Then we, we, we have a we have a belief that they somebody's gonna repent and change. Yeah. And it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. That we because the scripture said there's gonna be nobody there to redeem you. But we looking for another redeemer. Which one gonna be true? What he said when he put us on them, he said to you, you know, nobody's gonna be there for you to redeem you. And then in the next couple of chapters, he's come back and say, when you wake up in the, in the land of your captivity and realize who you are and turn back to me, he said, that's when everything going to reverse. Yeah. I'm going to redeem you. There's nobody, there's no government, there's no president, there's no system, there's no, there's nothing. There's no bitcoins, there's no, you know, nothing is going to redeem y'all. But me. And when I when I when I was petitioning the Most High in prayer on how to pray, because when I when I it's it's hard for me to understand at times when when he says that this is going to happen, 
Um, I remember you, I think it was last week you were, you were saying how there are some things that, uh, about the election that you were kind of hoping that you were wrong about. <clears throat> and I, I, I totally get where you are. There's, there's things that he has said he's, he's going to happen. And I would love to be wrong. I would love to not see what I feel like he's, he's, uh, allowing me to see. I would love to not hear some of the things that I feel like he's he's saying. And so I so I asked myself and I asked him, how do I pray about these things? And his answer to me was, you pray for those who will have a heart and a mind to repent. You, you, you can't pray for the evil to uh to uh, you know for evil people to not be evil. You 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 because they're going to they're, they're coming out of a bottomless pit. I think we read in um, uh, Psalm fifty eight they were born evil from the day the day they came into this earth. That's all they know to do is be evil. So you can't pray against that. But among those who might have a heart to repent, we pray for those people because if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then and only then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive them, I will heal the land. And the only way that, you know, what we're going to what we're going to go through, the only way that this thing is going to be tamped down at all is that we have to know who we are and we have to wake up and repent. Yeah. Well, I can, I think that was eloquent eloquently spoken. Early mentioned one and a half I mean, I think you said it. And uh, I mean, I don't have anything to add to that. You know, the most high, all praises to him forever and ever. And I appreciate you, brothers, and th these discussions. Uh, you know, this is a this is a highlight of my week. I mean, you know, no matter what the week has, what, what has occurred, this is a highlight for, for me. Um, and, you know, if I if I were to say just one thing for everybody to hear who has an ear is wake up, Yasharel. Wake up. Yeah. And, and a quick note, um, my wife has given us a nickname. <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> she, she calls she calls us the elders at the gate. <laughs> uh -oh. Like old men sitting at the at the at the entry gate just talking to each other. And Watch out now. <laughs> <laughs> Say now. <laughs> hey Dante. Hey. I, I noticed. Two or three grades right there, so I think you qualify. For <laughs> two or three. <laughs> two or three. You, you didn't, but I found them. Yeah, yeah, let, me, yeah. let me let me adjust my lighting. I was trying to hide them. <laughs> hey, um, hey, um, D Mac, when you were brought yeah. up, uh, when you brought up the Japanese um, uh, monster, man, I, I just knew you was going to bring up Ultraman. <laughs> I just knew it, man. This dude, this dude about to go old school for real and bring up Ultraman. <laughs> I still watch Ultraman. Oh day. wow! wow. Hey, hey, hey! Yeah. <laughs> what you what you know? What's up now? <laughs> yeah, y'all, yeah, y'all went, y'all went way back on that. I don't even know what what y'all talking about right? on the Ultraman. <laughs> Ultraman and <laughs> look up Ultraman and my three giants. <laughs> exactly. What I'm trying to say, look it up. Go look it up. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, that's a little too. That's a little uh, old for me. <laughs> Go look it up. I don't have enough gray hairs for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's good. But yeah, let's. Um, you know, it is a, a spirit, a spirit of of heaviness, and. Uh, and it's really not to me. It's not about the election. Mm -mm. It's it really not. People think it's about the election. It's it's the spirit that's been released. Yeah. And yeah. so, and that spirit that's been released, man. You can't put that sucker back in the bag. You just can't. Yeah. Do it. It's it's mm -hmm. it's it's out there. And uh, knowing where we're headed, and and the and the, and and the things that we've got to go through as people. You know, that's heaviness. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm planning on, uh, you know, doing a fast, you know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe start tomorrow, Friday. 
not sure how long I'm going to go, but I'm going to start here pretty soon with a fast, you know, and plus I want to get, get some prayers in for, for Corey. He got, he has his surgery uh, a week from today, uh, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So he goes in to do some prep work on Monday and then, uh, so he has surgery a week from tomorrow. So, okay. so we need, we got a lot to pray about. So I just, I feel like I need to fast. Yeah. Few days. And it, it's 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 always amazing how Yah works. Uh, I've been thinking about it too. It's um it's been off and on on my mind, and bit more and more here lately. I've been it's been like kind of just echoing. You know, it's time to fast. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I'll join you. I'll just shoot me a message or something. Let me know when you're thinking about it, and I'll I'll pray about it too, and and make sure Yah leads me. Okay. All right. So I'm a I'm a aim for for. For Friday, and then just do a continual, you know, just you know. So that's 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 my goal. I'm not sure how how long I go. I'm gonna go as long as I, I you know, as I can. Um, so, but I'm not expecting everybody to do that. But I'm just saying, you know, even if it just, you know, it, you know, if, if you're not, not used to it, I'm just speaking to anybody who's listening. You know, if you can just do 12 hours or 24 hours or you know, and, you know, 36 hours or whatever, whatever you can do and fast and pray and then if you stop and then start back up again and i and i think you know as, as we're as we're you know sharing this with whomever might be listening you know we're, we're not we're not fasting or i'm not gonna fast with the thought of changing something you know I, you know I'm, I'm fasting for what you brought up earlier kendall being able to hear the most mm -hmm. high you know fasting for clarity what is it that you're saying what is it that you would want me to do? What is it that you want me to be aware of so that when time comes, I will hear you and take action. That's, that's, that's what I'll be fasting for. Yeah. With you. yeah that that's, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. That's my perspective as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, what, what are you saying and what you want us to do, how you want us to handle it? You know, uh, yeah. you know, and so we'll, we'll go from that perspective, you know, Amen. Yeah. You know, you, I mean, Kendall, not not to be redundant, but man, you you hit the nail on the head. Something has been released. Yes. As I was, you know, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I thought I saw it. You know, I thought it was kind of obvious. You know, when, at the election, but with these cabinet selections, um, <clears throat> and then as I started really, you know, listening to some of my my cohorts, my peers, you know. Say, making some of the things that they were saying, and then the Most High, you know, showed me these scriptures in Jeremiah. Man, we we really, you know, we really got to wake up. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm gonna tell you when I saw the initial release of it, it's just been growing ever since. You know, um, it was like it was like a, a it was revelatory in a way, you know, because we know that uh, you know Martin Luther King represented something, you know, uh, you know, in 1960, uh, 1968. And it was exactly 40 years later, then all of a sudden we're getting uh, a representative of the community, you know, uh, 40 years later, you know, and then mm -hmm. exactly 40 years after that, and these people were upset and this spirit is released. And I saw a change in the, uh, in the Eurocentric ministers that I used to uh, mm -hmm. listen to, the things they were saying, and it was like, wow, you know. That spirit, it's a different spirit, you know what I'm saying? I just saw a different spirit. And it's it's it 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 grew and grew and grew and grew. And by the time 2015, 16 got here, it, you know, it, it bloomed to another level. But now it, I mean it just it, it's, it's yeah, it's it's just full displays. And uh, you know, there's no denying it. There's no hiding in that. No, they ain't even trying to. Nope. So uh, not only yeah. is it full display, but it, it's it's actually in motion. It's mm -hmm. almost like an accelerated. Mm -hmm. um, it's yeah. preaching from the pulpit. It's preaching. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it is. And so you know, and I and I've been saying this for, you know, before uh, you know. To several other people for probably about a year or so now, the spirit of uh, Haman. Mm. And so you read the the book of Esther, and, and Haman is just plotting. Mm -hmm. He just, he just get mad looking at Mordecai. He, he you know just looking at the Jewish folk, 
He just he passed by Mordecai. Mordecai be standing in the gate, and he just think about how he's going to destroy Mordecai. He just can't stand him. And he build. He he finally gets his plot in there, and he, you know, he he convinces the king that these people right here, you need to get rid of. Them. And at that time, the Persian kingdom, we were spread out all over different. I forgot how many provinces it was. Like maybe a hundred provinces or something like that all over India, uh, you know, Asia. I mean, because the Persian kingdom was huge. And so in every province where we were, the, the mandate went out that we were going to be killed. We were going to be slaughtered. And so Haman was good. I mean, he had his plan. He was going to finish us off. He was going to be through with Mordecai. And his life, was gonna, he was going to be happy because we were gone. You, that's the spirit that I'm yeah. seeing, and he built. He built. He he passed by him one more time. He saw him. He built gallows, and he envisioned Haman hanging from the gallows. But he didn't know that he had an Esther for such a time as this, <laughs> and the same gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai and, and the other Jews. Him and his ten sons end up hanging on those same gallows. Yep. And so at some point, Obadiah. <laughs> at some point, you know, uh, you know, whether we're waiting in paradise because we're we prepared our souls for the kingdom, and he and we're oh, escorted wow. by the angels into the into paradise where we wait, and we start asking, "Well, how long?" Like you how said, long? "How right. long?" Oh. Or whether we had to go through what we got to go through, or whatever. The promise is still there. And at some point, he's going to flip the script. And so, but for the joy that is set before us, we're going to endure it. Yeah. And we're going to despise the shame. Mm -hmm. All right, fellas. Amen. <laughs> Another yeah. good one, brother. Yeah. Another good one. Fellas, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for entertaining this with me. Thank you for helping me through this and, and to see with clarity, much, much, much greater clarity. I'm still, it's still stuck in my craw, you know, the bottomlessness of it, but in, in a different way now. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, it, there's an expectation of bottomlessness that, we, that, I, that I'm prepared for, I'm preparing for, you know, it's not going to take me by surprise in that respect. Uh, I, I can recognize it. I can see it. Mm -hmm. So, so thank you for helping to open my eyes to some of this. And I really just appreciate the most high for you, gentlemen. I really do. All yeah. praises to the most high. All, 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 praise. all praises to the most high. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, because I'm I'm going in the opposite direction now. I'm I'm going to be surprised when somebody stands up and do the right thing. Right. 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 That's why I want to be. I'm gonna be shocked at that. Not. I'm not gonna be shocked at how evil these folks. Yeah. yeah. Cause, cause yeah. We've been fighting that all our lives. Right. All right, fellas. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Kendall, but you know, I can't. I can't let you pass that. <laughs> <laughs> can't let you go. Know, I'm sitting there looking at this scripture in uh, Jeremiah <laughs> chapter 18, verse 7. It says, "At any time." I might announce, this is the most high talking. At any time, I might announce that a nation or a kingdom will be uprooted, torn down, or destroyed. But if that nation I warn turns from its evil, then I will relent of the disaster I had planned to bring. Now, if if if, if this nation does that, then we got something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. But it ain't gonna happen. No. <laughs> 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 it ain't gonna happen. I, I don't know, Hank, that sounds like Hank, that sounds like pessimism to me. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, I, I'll just say uh, this nation, he's already said his word. He's gonna judge this nation. Now, judge it. You know, but he you know, he said that. So now he may preserve a remnant after that judgment and say, you know, I'm gonna leave y'all alone, I'm gonna leave a hundred million. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, come on, man. I know that math, man. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he might say that, but he, he, I think he has a, he announced that judgment with, with Abraham. He ain't changing that one. So. He ain't changing that. Mm-hmm. ain't going to happen, dog. Nah. <laughs> you, know. you can be the accuser of the brethren all you want. Call me pessimistic, man. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> <It ain't> happen. <laughs> You know, he might he might give you 15 more years or 20 years, but it's, it's done. It's done, man. It's done. It is. All well, right. we got a lot, we got a lot to look forward to. And mm-hmm. uh I thank the most high for giving me brothers like y'all to look forward to with. Amen. <laughs> I do too, man, and it, it it really strengthens me to look even deeper in myself and say, you know, there's some things that need to be cast out or some things. You know, that need to be gone that I'm hanging on to. You know, uh, and so even in the middle of the burden, the blessing is that I'm I'm more introspective. You know, because I don't want to leave here with stuff, with baggage. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 all working for the good either way. So Amen. All right, we'll keep on going. So I'm gonna go and say shalom. <laughs> shalom. shalom. Love you guys. Thank you too. All man. right. Love you all. In a shocking 1700s historical document to black Americans, a German professor used the term Negro as a reference to black Jews both in Africa and in Portugal. The author also makes a clear distinction between the black Jews and black Moors. The Moors were largely a distinctly different mixture of black people most of whom had converted to the Muslim faith. The author candidly points out that the black Jews were specifically targeted for the slave trade, and that the black Moors were intentionally avoided, and that the Negroes also known as black Jews were then sent to the Americas during the slave trade. Get your e-book and audiobook bundle today. Choose from the following three options. Option 1. Get free copies of the original 1700s documents only. Option 2. Get an easy to read edited ebook, plus free copies of the original 1700s document for a low price of $10. Option 3 Get an audiobook for easy listening, plus the easy to read edited ebook, and also free copies of the original 1700s document for a low bundle price of $15. Learn the real history they don't want you to know.